Hey guys, it's been a while, but I'm kind of late to the party on this one. So come to find out that the website Omegle went down, right? And I was actually very shocked because I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I remember being in like 2009 on the internet and everything and actually playing on Omegle. And it was actually one of the funnest things around. But at the same time, I can kind of understand why. What's up, everybody? I'm Amarks. And today we're going to be discussing what happened to the website Omegle. Okay, so for some reason, Omegle actually got shut down because it was constant misuse of the website. There was a bunch of people abusing the shit out of it and everything, you know. It's kind of wild to think about because this website actually sounds like it's been for on forever. But actually coming to do the research on this video, the shit came out in 2009, which is absolutely mind-blowing because I could have sworn it came out earlier. I'm honestly not really shocked about the whole thing being discontinued and everything because I remember the website having a lot of discrimination, a lot of pornography type stuff. There was also a lot of creepy ass dudes or mainly, yeah, mainly dudes who would go on there and try to look for kids and stuff. And minors also were using it too back then to kind of troll or to try to talk to people because they like to explore on the internet. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I was one of those kids who actually did play on Omegle for a little bit. I even made a YouTube video with me on Omegle like 10 years ago or some shit like that. Like, it's insane how long it's been. But it's kind of funny looking back. But... Yeah, the website honestly had a bunch of controversy to begin with. And I don't know if you guys really know about this, but in 2019, there was actually a lawsuit against Omegle about CP usage and exploitation, which is absolutely insane because I've never really heard much of this when, when it first happened. And I actually did some Google research and yeah, there was a big lawsuit of $22 million of CP of uh, just because of they are responsible for all those people getting exploited on the internet and basically Omegle because I don't really I really doubt they do anything about it because it was like one of those very last of like the old internet slash early internet like early new modern internet at the same time it's like an in-between you know because it was it came out in 09 to 10 because that in-between from regular technology and then smartphones and yeah, it's just it's just crazy that that did not end, put an end to that website a little bit sooner. So guys, it's safe to say that uh, Amigo was on some wild bullshit. <laughs> so now I wonder if you guys are wondering is what happens next with Amigo and everything? Well, they actually decided to move it to a actual app platform. So this is how like things transitioning over to the next generation or current generation of technology. It's called like the monkey app, but it's still called Amigo and everything. I have not used it yet, but I might try to use it. But at the same time, probably not a good idea because it would not surprise me if it was just like the original browser, you know, a lot of creepy ass dudes and stuff. Now, there is something left of the original website when you go on it, which is absolutely kind of cool, actually. But when you go on the website, you'll see that Omegle's not completely shut down as a server because they didn't delete it. They decided to have the founder leave a nice long message with a tombstone saying, uh, like, to, like, Omegle 2009-2023. And I'm going to read you guys the whole thing, what he said, and it kind of gets you guys, like, a message of what he was trying to tell. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be kind of cool. Okay guys, the message on this website from the founder says, uh, Dear strangers, from the moment I discovered the internet at a young age, it has been a magical place to me growing up in a small town, relatively isolated from the larger world. It was a revelation of how much more there was to discover, how many interesting people and ideas the world had to offer. As a young teenager, I could not wait just waltz onto a college campus and tell a student debate moral philosophy, I could walk up to a professor and say, tell me something interesting about microeconomics. But online, I was able to meet those people and have those conversations. I was also an avid Wikipedia editor. I contributed to open sources, software projects, and I often helped answer computer programming questions posed by people many years older than me. In short, the internet has opened the door to a much larger, more diverse, and more vibrant world than I would ever otherwise been able to experience and enabled me to be an active participant in and contribute to, to that world. That world. All of this helped me to learn and to grow into a more rounded person. Moreover, as a survivor of childhood rape, I was accusedly aware of that any time I interacted with someone in the physical world, I was risking my physical body. The internet gave me a refuge from that fear. I was under no illusion and only good people use the internet, but I knew that if I said no to someone online, they couldn't physically reach through the screen and hold on a weapon to my head or worse. 
I saw the miles, miles of copper wires and fiber optic cables between me and other people as a kind of shield. One that empowered me to be less isolated than my trauma and fear would have otherwise allowed. I launched Omega when I was 18 years old and still living with my parents. It was meant to build on the things I loved about the internet while introducing a form of social spontaneously, spontaneously that I felt I didn't exist somewhere. Yes, the internet is a manifestation of the global village. Omega was meant to be the way of strolling down the street in that village, striking up conversations with the people you ran along along the way. The premise, the premise or premise was rather straightforward when you said Omega. It would randomly, randomly place you in the chat with someone else. Those chats could be as long and as short, as short as you chose. If you didn't want to talk to a particular person for whatever reason, you could simply end the chat and, if desired, move on to another chat with somebody else. It was the idea of meeting new people this tone this till down to almost its platonic ideal. Building on what I saw, the interest safety benefits of the internet, users were anonymous to each other by default. This made chats more self-contained and made it less likely that a malicious person would be able to track someone else down off-site and, and after their chat ended. I didn't know what to expect when I launched Amigo. Would anyone even care about some website that an 18-year-old kid made in his bedroom in his parents' house in Vermont with no marketing budget? But it become, became so popular almost instantly after launch and grew organically from there, reaching millions of daily users. I believe this had something to do with meeting new people being a basic human need and with Omegle being among the best ways to fulfill that need. As the saying goes, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will leap beat a path to your door. Over the years, people have used Omegle to explore in foreign cultures to get advice about their lives from impartial third parties and to help ele elevate feelings of loneliness and isolation. I have even heard stories of soulmates meeting on Omegle and getting married. Those are only some of the highlights. That is absolutely weird. I don't think I've ever heard of that, but hey, you know what? To each his own. That's kind of cool. Unfortunately, there are also low lights. Virtually every tool can be tool used for good or for evil, and that is especially true of communication tools due to the inmate flexibility. The telephone can be used to wish your grandmother happy birthday, but it can also be used to call in a bomb threat. There is there can be no honest accounting of Amigo without acknowledging that some people misuse it, including to commit unspeakably heinous crimes. I believe in a responsibility to be a good Sarmidian and to implement reasonable measures to fight crime and other misuse. That is exactly what Amigo did. In addition to the basic safety feature of anatomy, there was some great deal of moderation behind the scenes, including state-of-art AI operating in concept with a wishful team of human moderators. Omigo punched above its weight in context moderation. I'm proud of what we have accomplished. Omigo's moderation even had a positive impact behind the site. Omigo went with law enforcement agencies and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to help put evildoers in prison where they belong. There are people rotting behind bars right now, thanks in part to evidence that Amigo proactively collected against them and the tip the authorities off to. All that said, the fight against crime isn't one that can ever truly be won. It's a never-ending battle that must be fought and refought er every day, uh, and even if you do the very best job it's possible for you to do. You may also make a sizable dent, but you won't win in any absolute sense of that word. That's heartbreaking if you also... But also a basic lesson of criminology, and one that I think the ma vast majority of people understand on some level. Even superheroes, the fictional characters that are in culture imbues with special powers as a form of wish fulfillment in the fight against some crime. Don't exceed, succeed at eliminating crime altogether. In recent years, it seems like the whole world has become ornery. Maybe that has something to do with the pandemic or with political disagreements. Whatever the reason... People may have faster, may become faster to attack and slower to recognize each other's shared humanity. One aspect of this has been a constant barrage of tax on communication services. Omegle included based on the behavior of a malicious subset of users. To an extent, it is a reason, reasonable to question the policies and practices of any place where crime has occurred. I have always welcomed constructive feedback and indeed. Omegle implemented a number of improvements based on the such feedback over the years. However, the recent attacks have always felt anything but constructive. The only way to please these people is to stop offering the surface. Sometimes they say so explicitly and avidly. Other times it can be interned from active setting standards that are not in him, hu, humanly achievable. Either way, the net result is the same. Omigo is the de direct target of these attacks, but their ultimate victim is you. And all of you who have used or would have used Amigo to improve your lives and the lives of others, when they say Amigo shouldn't exist, they are really saying that you shouldn't be allowed to use it, that you shouldn't be allowed to meet these random people online. That idea is 
and anathemia to the ideals I cherish, specifically to the bedrock principle of a free society that when restrictions are imposed to prevent crime, the burning of these restrictions must not be targeted at innocent victims or potential victims of crime. Consider the idea that society ought to for force women to dress modestly in order to prevent rape. One counter argument is that rapists don't usually target women based on their clothing. But a more powerful counter argument is that in irrespective of what rapists do, women's rights should remain intact. If society robs women of their rights to bodily anatomy and self-expression based on the acts of rapists, even if it does with the best intentions in the world, then society is practically doing the work of rapists for them. Fear can be a valuable tool guiding us away from danger. However, fear can also be a mental cage that keeps us from all the things that make life worth living. Individuals and families must be allowed to strike the right balance for themselves based on their own unique circumstance and needs. A world of mandatory fear is a world war by fear, a dark place indeed. I've done my best to weather the attacks with the interests of Amigos users and broader principle in mind. Something as simple as meeting random people is forbidden. What's next? That's far and removed away from anything that could be considered a reasonable compromise of the principle I outline. Analogies are a limited tool, but a physical world analogy must be shutting down Central Park because crime occurs there, or perhaps more proactively, destroying the universe because it contains evil. A healthy, free society cannot endure what we are collecting afraid of each other to this extent. Unfortunately, what is right to not always prevail. As much as I wish circumstances were different, the stress and expense of this fight coupled with this express stre stress of an expense of operating Amigo and fighting its misuse is simply too much. Operating Amigo is no longer sustainable financially nor so psychologically. Frankly, I don't want to have a heart attack in my 30s. The battle for Amigo has been lost, but the war against the internet rages on. Virtually every online communication service has been subject to the same kinds of attack as Amigo, and while some of them are much larger companies with much greater resources, they all have their breaking point somewhere. I worry that unless the tide turns soon, the internet I fell in love with may cease to exist, and in its place, we will have something closer to a souped-up version of TV. Focus larger on passive cons consumption with much less opportunity for active participation and genuine human connection. If that sounds like a bad idea to you, please consider donating to the Electrical Frontier Foundation, an organization that fights for your rights online. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who used Amigo for positive purposes and to everyone who contri contributed to the site's success in any way. I'm sorry I couldn't keep fighting for you. Sincerely, Leaf K. Brooks, founder of Amigo LLC. So yeah, that is a very long message, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a very well thought out, long response to the whole thing of and, and good, a decent explanation too of what he kind of believes in as well. Also, guys, I am so sorry if that was really long to read. That's about a 10 minute summary I read in the whole thing, and I'm surprised I recorded it and did it all in one take. But yeah, that shit is wild. But yeah, I I do agree a little bit with what he has to say, the founder and of El Eagle and everything, because. It sounds like this dude was operating the site for so long that it was constantly making him have mental stress, was it affecting his actual health and having social anxiety, and financially he had to also basically try to keep up with like, you know, the income he was getting from it and also probably paying to the IRS and stuff like that. One thing I don't really like in this is the the, the rant about like political reasons and stuff. Like I'm not going to get political or anything, but like he shouldn't have to get political in, in, in a summary like this for a basic website. But I can understand to an extent, but like I said, this is a pretty neutral ass channel. I ain't going to debate any of that. But it is really cool how he basically poured his heart out into this whole summary. Alrighty, guys, what's your guys' thoughts and opinion about Amigo? Do you think they should have, like, he should just, con like, not continued it at all? Or it should have not been revived through an app? Or do you think he should just, you know, let it rest? Because this dude's still pretty young. He sounds like he's only in his late 20s or something like that. And he could have just, you know, put it to rest. Okay, so that should conclude the whole summary and explanation of Amigo and what's kind of currently happened to it. What's your guys' thoughts on the website? Like I said, uh... Do you want to do you do you want to still use Amigo or would you rather just kind of move on to something else because it's been around for about what 14 years around yeah that's about right <laughs> yeah it's a good it's a pretty good run I can't believe all that stress okay guys if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to hit a leave a like and if you really enjoyed today's content make sure to slap that subscribe button I know it's been a while since I made a video and everything I actually got a new office obviously. I decided to finally use my second bedroom as something else. I did have somebody living here for a while, but it didn't things didn't work out. But I decided to take advantage of the second bedroom and 
<laughs> I make it a new office and tell me what you guys think in the in the comments if you like. I'm not gonna lie guys, it makes organization and stuff, making content and videos a little bit easier because you have to see my stupid ass bed anymore because sometimes I'd be really unorganized with that a little bit and try to make my bed as best as possible. But sometimes with what working so much right now too, I'm working like six days a week at my current job. So making videos and stuff like this can be a little bit time consuming when you have a bunch of other errands to catch up on. But yeah, I'm, it's been a while. I know I'm talking a lot and rambling, but it's just been a while. And I just want to let you guys know that I don't want to, you know, I'm definitely trying to get back in the rhythm of things. It's just the holiday season really sucks. If you got this far into the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. So I'll peace out.